All right. Um, now I am going to talk about the Lagrangian function and uh, well, about how we can apply the method of Lagrange multipliers in uh, for functions of three variables. Now, uh, let me kind of let us look at the method of uh, Lagrange multiplier in um, two variables one more time, right? So the idea here is that we have some some function f of x, y, and we want to. It doesn't really matter whether we want to find the minimum or the maximum. Let's say we want to find the minimum subject to the constraint g of x, y equals k. Now, I am going to um, change it around a little bit. Um, so I'm going to basically, um, instead of um, having the constraint of the form g of x, y equals k, I'm going to change it to g of x, y equals zero, right? So versus f of x, y should be minimized subject to the constraint g of x, y is zero. It's not really a big change because, you know, if say your constraint is something like x, y is, I don't know, three, you, you can always change it to x, y minus three is, is zero. So you can always move this to the left-hand side and change any constraint of the form equals k to the constraint of the form equals zero, right? So uh, why am I doing this? Because uh, there is a kind of a neat trick that I, I think it's a little bit helps to, to, to remember the method of Lagrange multipliers. It kind of makes a little bit more, more sense. But I guess at, at least to me, and, and, and this is, I believe how, you know, the, the, this is the original formulation of the method of Lagrange multipliers that, I mean, you, you could very often, it, it appears in textbooks and uh, it is also explained in Wikipedia, right? So the, what, what I'm going to do here is uh, instead of, um, uh, writing down the, the, the equations for the method of Lagrange multipliers as, as presented in, in the previous part, I'm, I'm going to introduce a new function L, which is going to be f of x, y minus lambda times g of x, y. So notice that the, the, this new function L is a function of x, y and lambda, right? So L, L, L is really a function of three variables, x, y, and lambda. And now I'm going to uh, find... Um, stationary points of this new function L. So the derivative of L with respect to X. So notice that the derivative of F with respect to X is, is really Fx minus lambda Gx. The derivative of L with respect to Y is, is Fy minus lambda Gy. And the derivative of uh, L with respect to lambda is minus G of, well, strictly speaking of x, y, but let me just write g. Okay, so now if I want to find stationary points of the, this new function L, then uh, I've got to equate this to zero, right? Uh, but then look at the, this equation. So essentially, I can move lambda gx to the right-hand side. So and so the, the, the first equation is really the, the same as fx is lambda gx let me, let me write it uh, this is same as fx equals lambda gx right and the second equation by the same logic is the same as f y equals lambda gy so the, the, these two equations together they um form the, the equation from the method of Lagrange multipliers as presented in the previous part that, that says nebula f is lambda nebula g. While the, the third equation is, is really nothing else but g equals zero, which is our constraint, right? So it's, it's kind of um, by forming this new so-called Lagrangian function and um, finding its stationary point, you essentially what you're, what you're doing is, is basically you are um, kind of um, rewriting, I mean, it, it, it's just a slightly different formulation of the method of Lagrange multipliers as presented in, in, in the previous part, only it's a little bit more compact form. Eh? So, because here you kind of need to remember two things. This is the first and this is the second. And when you rewrite it in terms of the, this Lagrangian function, then you only have one thing. So you, you, you just um, find the values, the, the 
critical the stationary points of the Lagrangian function, right? So, but it, it is really the, the same thing, and it, it works for an arbitrary number of variables, right? So, th this is an equivalent formulation of the method of Lagrange multipliers, right? So, to find extreme values of a function f subject to a constraint. So, the only thing is that you need to pay attention to is that the constraint should be equals zero, not not some non-zero constant. Right, so you form the, this Lagrangian function, which is a function of n plus one variables, and then you, you just find its stationary points, which which essentially means that you find the derivative with respect to x one equal to zero, the derivative with respect to x two equal to zero, and, and so on. Okay, um, I mean it, it's up to you which way you you want to do. So if you want to introduce the Lagrangian function, so please go ahead. If you find more convenient to use the original formulation. So, which is write nabla f equals uh, lambda times nabla g, and g is whatever, zero, okay. Um, if you find that this is more convenient, then please go ahead. It, it's really the, the same thing. All right. Uh, so, um, basically, um, yeah, so the pen battery is low, so let me recharge the sticky pen. So here is an example of how we can do it. Um, well, for three variables and with kind of the, the new, um, slightly different uh, version of the method. So that, that, that uses the function L, the Lagrangian function. So a rectangular box without a lid is to be made from uh, 12 square meters of cardboard. So, so let me draw the picture. And so, so here we have a rectangular box. So this is what it looks like. without the lid, so it, it, it's something like this. I guess, yeah, something like this. Without the lid, right? So it's kind of the no lid, no cover. So it's not covered. It's to be made from 12 um, meters of cardboard. So if it is a rectangular bo box, then it has certain dimensions like X, Y, and Z. Um, it can be shown by some advanced method that the maximum volume of such a box exists. Okay, so here we don't really have to care to, about proving that the maximum volume volume exists, right? So use the Lagrange multiplier method to find the dimension of the box with the maximum volume, right? So it means that the volume of the box, which is x, y, z, is to be maximized. And there is a constraint. So the constraint is that the total surface area of the, this rectangular, rectangular box is 12. So the surface area it consists of the bottom part, which is x, y, plus uh, the four sides. So the, the, the area of the side is x, z. The, this is the kind of the, the front side. The right side is y, z. The back side is, is also x, z. And the left side is also y, z. Right? So this is 12. Um, we can rewrite it as, uh, well, xz and xz is 2xz, so it is xy plus 2xz, yz, yz, so plus 2yz, minus 12 is 0. Okay, so the Lagrangian function is going to be f minus a lambda times this. So this is the Lagrangian function, is xyz minus a lambda times x, y plus 2x, z plus 2y, z minus 12. So the, the question is, uh, so I mean, the, the method is to find the uh, stationary point of the Lagrangian function. So we need to find partial derivatives of the Lagrangian functions with all the variables, including lambda, right? so all the four. And solve for x, y, and, and lambda. So essentially, we are interested in x, y, and z. So lambda is not, not really important. OK, so um, this is the uh, the setup here. And here is the Lagrangian function. So again, so what we need to, to do is we need to, to find partial derivatives of the Lagrangian function with respect to x, y, z, and lambda 
and equate all of them to zero. Okay, um, so how do we do that? Um, so basically we just differentiate directly. So Lx is yz minus lambda times 2z plus y. This should, should be zero. <laughs> so Ly, uh, Ly is uh, xz minus lambda 2z plus x should also be equal to zero. Lz should be equal to what? To x y minus lambda times two uh, x plus two y. They, they should be equal to zero. And well, L lambda is essentially our constraint. So it's is minus two x z plus two y z plus x y minus twelve is zero. Okay. Uh, how do we solve the, this system of equations? Now, um, unfortunately, the, there is no kind of um, general um, procedure that, that you can ju just follow to, to, to solve it. So every time when you have something like this, you really need to be inventive. You need to think, kind of, what, what do we do here? So how can we solve it? And it's not immediately clear. So what I usually do is I, I would and th th this is by the way so i am going to present uh, a different method than uh in the printed slides right so what i'm going to write on, on the screen is going to be different because the, the method that i came up with it is is different uh so what, what i would do i would um, um basically try to solve for for lambda or to express z as a function of x um, and why, and, and see how, how it goes. Uh, well, in particular, so, you know, when you look at this um, equation, so say at, at the first equation, so you see that the, the first equation, um, it has no x. And the second equation has no y, which essentially means that uh, if you solve for z in the first equation, you will have some z equals some expression in, in y. And if you solve for z in, in the second equation, you will uh, see that z is some expression in x. And then when you equate them, you will get an equation on, on just x and y, right? So which is like a huge improvement as compared to the original system of equations, right? So let us do that. So let us uh, solve express z from the first equation and express z from the second equation and equate them. Okay. So uh, from the first equation, uh, uh, I get yz minus 2 lambda z uh, equals lambda y. Right. So y minus 2 lambda times z equals lambda y. So uh, from here, I see that z equals uh, lambda y divided by y minus 2 lambda. And of course, from the second equation, I mean, it, it is completely symmetric, right? So you just replace x, uh, y with x. So you, you see that z is lambda x divided by x minus 2 lambda. Well, strictly speaking, this works as long as, you know, for, for this to work, y has to be, uh, shouldn't be equal to 2 lambda. And for, for this to work, x shouldn't be equal to 2 lambda. Uh, but let, let's worry about this, this later. Right, but of course, z, I mean, it is the, the same z, right? So this should be equal to, 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 to this because both of them are z, 
right? So it means that uh, what we essentially have here is is this. Uh, so let me erase this, free some some space. Um, a lambda y divided by y minus 2x equals, sorry, by y minus 2 lambda is lambda x divided by x minus 2 lambda. All right, so th this is the corollary from the equation for the Lagrangian function. Okay? Now, uh, so here are our uh, Lagrangian equations. So uh, there is a type of error here. So this is really minus uh, lambda. Okay, I, I will fix it later. Sorry, but the important part is that um, so we have obtained this equation, right? Uh, so again, lambda x divided by um, x minus two lambda equals lambda y divided by y minus two lambda. Okay, so now we can uh, multiply it by uh, y minus two lambda and x minus two lambda, right? So doing this, we get lambda x times y minus two lambda equals lambda y times x minus two lambda. Uh, now expanding this, we will get lambda x y minus two lambda square x equals lambda x y minus Two lambda square y. So this cancels out. Minus two cancels out. So the remaining thing is just a lambda square x equals a lambda square y. All right. So which essentially means that either a lambda square is zero or x equals y. And if lambda square is zero, it's, uh, it just means that lambda itself is zero. Okay, so basically we have to consider two cases, lambda is zero or x is, uh, sorry, x equals y. All right, so let me uh, quickly scroll back to, to, to see what happens if lambda is zero. So to consider the case lambda is zero. So basically if lambda is zero, then this whole part disappears, right? So because lambda is zero. So in that case, yz is zero, xz is, is also zero, and xy is, is, is also zero, right? So, but then the pairwise products of three numbers, x, y, z are zeros. So which is only possible if uh, at least two of the, the, these numbers are zeros. So, but in, in that case, our objective function x, y, z is, is zero. So the, the volume is zero. And that's clearly not the case when the volume is maximized. So because it's rather the case when the volume is minimized, it's just zero, right? So this is, I will write, this is not the maximum. When lambda is zero, it is a probably a feasible case. I, I don't know, I haven't checked the last equation, but it is certainly not the maximum. Okay, so we are going to uh, discard the case lambda equals zero. And we are going to assume that lambda is not zero and x equals y, therefore, right? So from doing the, this equation, we can discard the uh, the case lambda is zero and we conclude that x equals y, right? So, so there are kind of two conclusions here. So the first is that lambda is not zero and second is that x equals y, sorry, x equals y. All right, um, but in that case, so we can just try to use this information. We can ju just try to substitute it into into other equations, right? So let us just substitute this into into other equations. So the, the first thing that, that we we have is that z equals to um, lambda x divided by x minus two lambda. Um, 
All right, so then uh, let me substitute x equals 1 into the third equation. Yeah? So let me scroll, scroll, scroll back. So um, so as I have already established, x lambda is not equal to 0, but x equals y instead. All right, so let me substitute x equals y into the third equation. So the third equation is x, y minus lambda times 2x plus 2y is, is 0, right? So doing this, so x equals y, so x squared minus lambda times 2x plus 2x is 0. So x squared minus 4x lambda is 0. Okay, so this is what, 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 what we get. Right, so let me just, just rewrite it here. So equation 3 yields... Uh, x squared minus 4 lambda x is 0. Uh, factoring out x, we get x times x minus 4 lambda is 0. Again, uh, so no, notice that x is not 0. So x is not 0. Because if x were 0, then... Uh, because x, y, z, so the volume should should be positive, right? So I mean, if, if the volume is zero, then it's not maximized. So since x is not zero, we can divide by x. So x minus four lambda is zero, and x equals four lambda. But re remember that y is also equal to x, so this is also y. Okay, so x equals y equals four lambda. So th th that's already a big improvement. So x equals y equals 4 lambda. So let's just find z. And, and we have z, right? So th this is our z. Uh, so um, let, let me just substitute x equals 4 lambda into the equation for z, right? Uh, so this is lambda times 4 lambda divided by 4 lambda minus 2 lambda. This is what it is, uh, 4 lambda squared divided by 2 lambda, which is 2 lambda. Notice again that lambda is not 0, so we can just, just divide by, by lambda. All right, um, so apparently it works. So what we got is that uh, x equals y equals 4 lambda, so z equals 2 lambda. So we are almost there. Right, so let us just use the, this information and substitute the, this information in, into the third equation. Right? So our third equation, so let me erase this. So let me look at the third equation. So this, this is my third equation. All right, so I'm going to substitute x equals 4 lambda, y equals 4 lambda, and z equals 2 lambda into the this equation. But notice that the uh, third, fourth equation is just our constraint, right? So it tells us that, okay, so let, let me do it. So 2x is uh, 4 lambda, z is 2 lambda, plus 2, y is uh, 4 lambda, z is 2 lambda, plus xy is 4 lambda times 4 lambda equals 12, right? Okay. So that, that's it. Uh, so all the terms here are 16 lambda. So let me just go back to, to the next page. So 16 uh, lambda square taken three times. Well, let, let me just, just times three equals 12. So 16 lambda square is just four, I believe. So lambda uh, square is four over 16 is uh, one quarter. Okay, so basically we found lambda, but then we also have the expressions for x, y, and z in terms of lambda, so which essentially means that we have solved the, the, the question, right? So lambda is, is one quarter, so let me just, just write it here. So x equals y equals four lambda, z equals two lambda, and a lambda square is one quarter. Uh, so lambda is plus minus one half. Now uh, minus one half is discarded. So minus one half discarded. 
because uh, if lambda were negative, then x, y, and z would be negative, right? So x, y, and z would be negative, and x, y, and z by the question, so they are sides of a box, so they cannot be negative, All right? So which means that lambda is, is, is just one half, and substituting it back into the equations for x, y, and z, we get that x is four times one half is two, y is two, and z is one. So, and that, that's the answer. Okay, so the dimensions of the box of the maximum volume are uh, two to one, and the maximum volume is two times two times one is, is four. Now, uh, it is fairly complicated to solve this, so you need to, 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 to I mean, in order to do it um, quickly, you probably need some practice. And even with practice, it's not really that easy. So, you know, when I prepared for this lecture, it took me some time to uh, derive the, this solution, to figure it out. Well, anyway, so, that was my own solution, so it is different from the solution printed here. So maybe you will find the printed solution easier to understand, but I'm not sure. So the, the printed solution, it kind of requires a little bit of a genuine trick. So you need, so the printed solution, to, to do the printed solution, you kind of need to take these equations and multiply them, uh, the, the first equation by x, the second equation by y, and the third equation by z, and then you kind of go from, from there, which I I think it, 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 is, it is a trick, so that, that is kind of hard to to figure out on, on your own if you're not familiar with the, these kind of tricks. So my approach is a little bit kind of di different, so, and it does not really require any, any tricks at all. So you, you just solve for, for Z, and then solve for Lambda, and that's it. It is long, but yeah. Okay, so, and that's basically how the method of Lagrange multipliers work uh, in dimension three and with a Lagrangian function instead of um, just um, kind of the, the first version of the um, Lagrange multipliers method. But still, the lambda there is called the Lagrange multiplier. Okay, so that's it, and please do this little quiz.